You've been surfing the way. Because when we talk to Kum Say, when we talk to Prophet, when we talk to Comet or the media of 1811 or 1812, when we talk dragons, they all might be the same thing. It's up to you where you want to go in your investigation. We have no fear. We are fearless investigators. We pick up every stone, man, and investigate and search the indigenous truth for scientific, repeatable, and observable validation. That's Drop Nation. This is Drop Nation. We keep the fire burning and the water flow. Are you keeping the fire burning? Gotta give a con up to the hot con higher mark. Watching Hi, Mart's amazing videos, you know, always bring me home, man. And he just put up one with this fireplace on. I said, oh, man, I, I got to get back. I, I, I got to light the fire. I got to twist the lock up for the hot con. So this fire right here goes out to Hi, Mart. Get in the classroom. Click the link below to subscribe to his new channel to get all the new new. And let's make it do what it do, man. Keep the fire burning. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about Aqua Tai Battle. <laughs> Another great one from the battle, the battle house, the battle home. History of ancient America, anterior to the time of Columbus, proving the identity of the Aborigines and the Tyrenians, Tyree, right? And the Israelites, all in one place. All this is the title of a book? We just talking to Kumse. Because they're talking to Kumse. We're talking comet and meteors because they're talking comets and meteors. There's fireballs popping off all over this place. We need to get back on our fireballs. Love to fireball Miss D and the Cop of Color Awakening. And love to all our dragon sponsors on the wall, man. That means you got the ether, the angelic energy because a dragon is an angel. A seraphim is a fiery burning one. With six wings. Right Isaiah. We're just surfing away. History of ancient America. Anterior to the time of Columbus. Proving the identity of the aborigines. We're talking comets, which means we're talking dragons, which means we're talking a fiery shooting meteor. We are talking to Kumse's comet, the comet of 1811. All right, look, man, we are talking Prester, right? Prester. A meteor. A meteor, man. Didn't uh, Robert Townsend put out the dang movie right in your face bone called Meteor Man? Meteor Man? Meteor Man? What was Robert Townsend trying to say? Brother Townsend, what were you trying to tell us about this Meteor Man? This meteor man, we're talking Prester, we're talking meteor, we're talking dragon, which is a shooting meteor man. I'm talking dragon, meteor man, I'm talking a 
fierce or violent person, this man or woman, male or female, this man or woman is a dragon, a meteor, man. Who is Prester John? Priest King, who is Tecumseh? Who are the Aborigines in America? American, right? We're talking the Khan Dynasty. The priesthood. A Native of America originally applied to the Aboriginals or Copper Color Races. So the races that match the complexion of grandma's old copper penny. This ruddy red brown naga is the aboriginal, is the Khan, the Amaru Khan, the aboriginal, the aborigine. You know we're talking Preston John the whole time, right? Did a black man, a copper color race man, discover the fountain of youth? Oh, we're gonna, I mean, we, I'm, I'm just getting groovy, man. We're just getting linky. Lots of links and stuff. When we talk Priest King. Now, which one? Are we talking David? Are we talking Moses? Are we talking Joshua? Are we talking Hezekiah? Hasdai? Hosea, all fit the description of a Prester John or a priest, a priest, a priest king, or a Khan. All this connects, man, with Tecumseh in this comment because we're talking Prester, right? Preste, Prester. We're talking the Aboriginal. We're talking the Prester or the Meteor. The Fountain of Youth in which Ethiopia? While most of us associate the Fountain of Perpetual Youth with the world, New World, especially Florida, that has only been the case for the last 500 years. But before that, hey, it must have been in Ethiopia over there, right? The duplicate. It must have been in Africa. Not where you're from in America. For a much longer stretch of history, actually dating all the way back to 5th century BC, so as far back as we can go, it's been believed to be in Ethiopia, or in what they're considering Africa, right? So all this time it was considered to be in Africa, up until 500 years ago. Roughly, right? You know, roughly. Up until 500 years ago, it was considered to be in Africa. And then sometime, I guess, after that 500 years, somewhere in the last 500 years, they started to consider something new because they were looking for something for so long. Here's that monument.
They were looking for something for so long. Bookmark this stuff, man, because, you know, how you spell Portuguese, something like that, you know, because we're going to be referencing this stuff. When anybody tells you that you shouldn't, you shouldn't be searching, you shouldn't be digging on the Tecumseh's and all the priests and chiefs, the priest chiefs. Your ancestors, you shouldn't be digging on them. Oh, they might be hijacked this way. They might be that. Or, they might be your last noble image, Negro. We're just talking Prester John. This is who they're looking for for how long? From 1145, the Portuguese got a monument up. Right. This is the full monument. You see this monument here? Alright, and then you got this is the monument, alright? The Portuguese got a monu monument searching for Prester John, eleven forty five to sixteen forty five. Five hundred years. Now in the last five hundred years, they stopped searching for Prester John in Africa. So what happened in America in the last four or five hundred years? Why did they need to stop searching? Why was the search concluded? Why aren't you searching? For the Israelites will live many days without a king or prince after without sacrifice, sacred stones, effort, or household gods. They can't worship no more idols. They got no more priests, no more king, no more prince, no more Khan. The Amaru Khan title is now taken. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek and search and seek and search and seek and search. For their creator, are you seeking or are you just uh, believing the hype? Believing what you always believe? Are you challenging yourself when you search and you start turning over every stone? Searching, you're challenging everything you think you know. Are you challenging? Are you seeking and searching for your creator truly? Or are you just trying to make it convenient for you? Because you can't seek no more. Because you can't search no more. You're in a fear spell. You're afraid to seek. You're afraid of being wrong, so you stop searching. Your ego keeps you from searching because you don't want to be wrong about anything you've said. We have a fearless investigation. We ain't afraid of being wrong or nothing because we investigating, man. Can't take a snapshot of our investigation. Think you got the whole picture? We're seeking. We're searching. Why? Because the Israelites will return, Hosea says, Joshua says. Hosea is Joshua. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek and search for their creator and David. Which one? David is a title. Moses is a David, a Dawit, a priest king. You got Joshua, right? You got who they're calling Prester John. And only, it's only been the case the last 500 years that they've associated the Fountain of Perpetual Youth with Florida. How does this tie in with the Kumse? Let's go. We're just talking about the American, right? The Aborigine, right? America, right? 
the new world, right? So for the last 500 years, they started looking over here. Why? Man, love to my drop drop chatter, man. I see the hot con in there, man. The Templar Urban Reed is dropping that drop, man. And the drop drop chatter, chat 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 chatter. You could become a dragon sponsor on the wall to sponsor the flow of the whole nation, the whole tribe. Yo, Seth the Real, man. Dropping nothing but heat bone. Oh, man, we're having a good time, man. Who's this? Kara Mayo. <coughs> <coughs> wow. Get my, get my wata. I got too excited about Carabao. And we're talking about the Dragoon. He dropped his great source here. This all we do is drop sources and dig on it, man. Queen, Mu, and the Egyptian Sphinx. Love to Carabao, man. He's always big up in everybody else, man. So go subscribe right now to Carabao. Uh, everyone here should definitely be subscribed over there. The bro is leaps and bounds beyond, you know, beyond the barrier, man. So. He's going to keep waking you up. Queen Mu and the Egyptian Sphinx. All right, by Augustus Lepagion. We're just talking about the Naga Empire, the history of India. The Empire of Deccan, Deccan, Deccan. I'm picking it up right here. It says Mayak, that is the land that first arose from the bottom of the deep they call it Mayak this is what they're saying all right they don't have to be what you are saying they don't have to be what you've ever seen you know what I mean empty your cup what is going on if you came over here just to rock with everything you think was right then we wouldn't be talking about much because we don't know nothing ain't about what we think we know it's about investigating Get the drop. So Mayak, that is the land that first arose from the bottom of the deep, was the name of the empire whose sovereigns bore the title Khan, which they say serpent. And we're going to get into, uh, uh, we're going to start a new series called Angels and Dragons. All right, where we're going to really talk about the angelic energy, the en angels. We're going to get very deep in the scripture, you know, talking about the angels, the seraphim, and the script. You know what I mean? Love to hot con hire Mark holding down the drop chat with me, man. Um, yeah, man. So, you know, this con title is not talking snake. It's talking dragon. It's talking dragon. Remember the con. Remember the Drakan, the Khan. Remember the American title, right? This is your title. It is the, this is the, America is the land of the fiery Dragon, fiery Khan. These are the vortexes. This is Mu, this is Atlantis. This is all those so-called old things, which are really the new, new for them. Because it's still the land of Preston John. They're still looking for the the fountain of youth. Especially in Florida. Why Florida? Why Florida? And this is a continuing investigation. So, you know, don't don't feel like you gotta rush to overstand anything. We just we just digging on it. No, you know, it's all good. It's all good. We're gonna get to why Florida. Alright, so you got Khan is the people. Mayak, the land that rose from the bottom of the deep, was the name of the empire whose sovereigns bore the title Khan, right? Khan, Khan, right? Khan, let's go. Spelled today Khan, K-H-A-N, in Asiatic countries, this title given by the Mayas to their rulers was derived from the contour of the empire that of a serpent with inflated breasts. <laughs> so a big strong dra dragon with his chest sticking out basically. Which in their books, in their, in their sculptures, they represent it sometimes with, sometimes without wings. So sometimes they had wings, sometimes they didn't have wings. What are we saying? 
that these serpents are winged serpents or fiery serpents or we're talking what? Dragons, we're talking comets, right? We're talking meteors, right? You got all these links, go ahead and click on them. I have to uh, the sister that dropped this on, on us. I can't remember who dropped it in the chat, but I believe it's one of our sisters in the chat, man. Uh, the Cheru, right? You got this Cheru, Cheru, or Karu. Almost like Cheru Key, right? Let's go. The Cheruve is a Chilean spirit of, of comets and asteroids, originally no more than the Aero Conian, Conian meteorite. The Cheru's role has since expanded <coughs> to include lava, volcanoes, fire exhalation, will of will o the wisp, whirlwinds, and animated stone ashes. Alright. So you got this whole history of this Cheru. Comets, asteroids, and meteor meteors are all Cherus. As are meteorites and oddly shaped volcanic rocks. So this is going into the fact. Alright. It is confused with dragons or so-called devils, right? That's what the Christians put on these things. Giants, alright. Bipedal ghosts with flaming eyes, but we are connecting the comments with the dragons. Right, we got this link before, which is out the journal WGN of the IMO, written by Elizabeth A. Warner. Meteor beliefs projects dragons as meteors or comets in Russian folk beliefs. So, we're about to get that. Right? I'm just letting you know where we're going, so you know when we talk comets. Kum say, comma to 1811, you got to at least consider the possibility that we're not talking about a space rock that did all these acrobatic things in the air and seem to have intelligent movement. They want to call it a, a, a saucer, a flying saucer, or is it a flying dragon, a dragon? And is this dragon, is this dragon just what we're talking about a person? Right, this meteor is a person. <clears throat> this dragon <clears throat> is a person. The meteor is a person, and the dragon's a person. And the definition of Prester is a meteor, and a meteor is a dragon. And we're just talking priests. This man or woman is a dragon. This man or woman is a dragon, and the dra and the dragon is the meteor. And you put in meteor. I mean, I'm just doing some recon with you. Don't mind me. Let's go meteor, meteor. If I spell that right. Slow neck. Yeah, man, you gotta really dig, man. A fiery shooting meteor or imaginary serpent, is, <laughs> right? A meteor, in a sense, a body that flies or floats in the air. So you're just thinking a meteor is a space rock. Do they say space rock in 1828? Are we talking space rocks in 1828? So, in the most general sense, if you're talking meteor, which is why we can talk dragons and meteor projects in articles written in 2003. We're going to get it. Comparing meteors or comets to dragons. And we're getting out here that this meteor in 1828 definition sure does sound like a dragon. Because even when we looked at dragon, they say meteor. So we're just talking about devils, or are we talking angels? If we talk Garden of Eden, and a serpent being in the Garden of Eden, do you think that was a snake? So what was he doing before he was cursed to have to crawl on his belly? It's a simple question. Before the snake had to 
go around cursed on his belly what was the snake doing was he flying was he walking he wasn't cursed to be on his belly was he walking did he have legs was he an imaginary serpent flying was he fiery so if this dragon is in the garden of Eden this serpent in the garden, right? This dragon is in the garden of Eden. Then that means he's in an angelic frequency to be in the garden in the first place. Now you have fallen dragons and dragons that continue to qualm and, and raise up the most high. So when we talk dragon, we're not just talking one single dragon or one single energy or one single meteor. We're talking the entire spectrum of fire, of water, of air, of earth. Without fire, where would you be? What do you have against fire? Without water, where would you be? What do you have against water? A water, a water. Without the ether, without the air, where will you be? Without your land, without the earth, where would you be? So I don't think you have an issue with the dragon. I don't think you have an issue with fire, water, air, and earth. I just think you think you do. So we're talking to Kumse, we're talking to Meteor, we're talking to the Priest Kings. We're always talking Preston John. Always, every video, we always are talking Preston John. Whatever we're talking about, we're talking Preston John. Because whatever we're talking about, we're talking about the Israelites living many days without a king or a prince and waking back up, returning to seek or search, to seek or search for their creator and David, their king. And they will come trembling to the Lord. It doesn't say they will fear, fear. No, they will tremble in their hearts in honor and respect. And to his blessing in the last days. So we're talking the what? Last days that you're going to seek or search. Have they been seeking? Have they been searching? Have they been seeking? Have they been searching? And why would they be seeking and searching in Florida, right? While most of us associate the found of perpetual youth with the new world, especially Florida, that's only been the case the last 500 years. So after they've been done seeking and searching within the last 500 years, the search concluded and they're now looking in Florida for this fountain of youth because it's connected to the Khan. The real Ethiopian in the Orient, which is the East, which is the so-called West is the East. And we're just talking Florida and the Fountain of Youth. And when I say Florida, I don't want you to think about Florida that you think of Florida today. Love the Caramel for this drop, man. It's always that drop, dropping in a drop, drop, chatter, a chat, 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 chat. I don't want you to think about the Florida that you think of today. I want you to think about La Florida. Look how large of a landmass this is. This is not just a little Florida. This is damn near a third of the, you know, big chunk of North America. Con -con. Look at all this land that's connected. 
So they say you're from Africa. You say, I'm an American. I'm from all this. I'm from Central, North, and South America. This is my land here. This is where we're actually from. They say, no, nah, nigga, you came from Africa. No, naga. They found us here. Here. And started taking us there. And they still find us here. And they put us in slavery on our own land. So, why is there a lot of Florida here? Covering such a large, you know, landmass. is because they're looking for the fountain of youth. Everywhere. All over what you so-called Georgia and South Carolina. So, when we talk to Kumse. <coughs> we talk Dragon Canoe. We talk these Tennessee migrations. You see it's covering all the area that they're calling Florida back in the day. And where's China? Just for kicks, because we're going to talk Kana. Where's China? Way over here, right? Make sure y'all can see it. Oh, yep, you see it? All right, cool. So... It says La China. La China. C H I N A. So all this is connected to you got Mexico here. You got Cuba. You know what I mean? So all this is called Cathay. This is also China. La China. You have India. India Superior. The Superior India. When we talk about the three Indias. You literally have a map with North America labeled India Superior. So this is the major superior India. This is Septimania, the seven kingdoms, seven cities of gold, seven caves. Khalifa, Sheba, Solomon, all this is their land, your land. This is all what's rocking throughout the so-called biblical times. This is where China is. This is where Columbus is trying to get to La China. This is where Florida is, which was basically damn near everything. Looking for the what? The fountain of youth. Think this is play play? You think this is play play? China, we're in the OISP. Right, they got a little glossary. And when you look in the OISP under the word China, it says a deliverer. A man of China, contemporary, contemporaneous with Moses and Capilia. We got to dig on Capilia. He was to China a great deliverer. Says China is named after him. He was an Isu by birth. And this is kind of where they're also getting this Jesus connection. Is that they were called Isus. Which are like pure vibration folk. And you know they got different flows on that. But that's pretty much a priest. So he was a priest by birth. And wrought miracles. He brought miracles. We got a miracle man who was contemporaneous, lived at the same time with Moses. Remember the definition of contemporaneous. Living or being at the same damn time. So I'm connecting all these priest kings. When I talk to Kumse, I'm talking Moshe. I'm talking Abraham. Joshua, let's go. Contemporaneous, living or being at the same damn time. A deliverer named China, or the CH is a K, Kana, Kenna. So we're talking the Kins. 
Are you talking the cons? Contemporaneous with Moses. Contemporaneous means what? Lived or being at the same time. So he lived or existed at the same time with Moses and someone called Capilia. Are they all the same thing? He was a great deliverer. Where? In China. Kenna. Kana. La China. Kana. Kenna. Lived a great deliverer in America. So let's talk deliverers. Since we know that we got Kana or Kenna literally referring to this deliverer. He restored China or Kenna Kana to life for seven days during which time he preached before the kings and the people. Then Jehovah or Hawa sent down a ship of light and bore China or Kana up to the heaven. The country China was named by him after himself. The country China was named by him after himself. So you have a Lakana or China right here in North America. How convenient. Right here on this map says La China and La Florida and India Superior and Cathay, Cathay, Cathay. You got Cathay, India, Florida, China. China is a deliverer. Man, I can't make this shit up. A deliverer living at the same time, contemporaneous at the same time with Moses. So let's go. Let's talk to Kumse's comment. Let's get into it. And then it's about to get real good because you're about to go right back in this book. Dropped on us by Aqua Thai Battle. You know, talking about the Coop say. This is by George Jones. All right. When we come back, we might have to hit it up right at uh, page 21 of the PDF. So download it. Uh, we dropped it in the drop chat. I'm sure it's going to be dropping soon on the site as well. And I'll leave the link. Leave the link below. Here's the preface to this book. To the deep historic interest expressed by His Royal Highness the Duke of Cambridge. This is who's interested in in, in Preston John. This is who's interested in the priest kings of America, the Aboriginal of America. The, the Royal Highness is interested in the Khans, the Copper Colored Nagas in America, the Aboriginals in America. Concerning the Aborigines of America may be traced the production of this work. It led the author originally to write the, look at it, Israel, Indian, Israel, Indian, Israel, Indian tragedy of Tecumseh, illustrative of the patriot, patriotic race of North the North, in which composition has received the honor of being dedicated to the illustrious prince by special permission. Now is it play play? When we talk the comet of Tecumseh in 1811, 1812? I mean, it, this event lasted a long time out here. I mean, shit was popping off everywhere in 1812. We're going to get... You know, a couple of drops from a couple of videos as well. It might be an all, you know, a brand new series we're starting because it's going to take, you know, quite a bit of investigating, not just a what off. If you're new to Drop Nation or 42 to Drop, I appreciate your subscription and just know that everything we do 
You know what I mean? Um, it goes back to the creator. It goes back to our purpose. It, go, it goes back to being framed in shape. And we try to do it here in series. We have different series going on at different times. And you can always tune in live in the ether at 432thedrop.com because we will be discussing this live. Uh, you know, we have live shows on Thursdays and Fridays, 9 o'clock Pacific. But uh, we, we, we have family dropping in the ether every single day now. So we got the live shows back going. Check out the live uh, schedule. I'll leave that link as well below. Um, and just know that we do this daily. We do this daily. We investigate daily. So you can't take a snapshot or frame us. We're being framed and shaped in real time. You've got to fall back and surf the wave. This is the third wave. We're doing it for the captives. Let's go. To the deep historic interest expressed by His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge, concerning the Aborigines of America, the Aborigines, copper-colored races found here by the European, press the John, let's go, may be traced the production of this work. It led the author originally to write the Israel Indian Tragedy of Tecumseh. So let's talk about this Israel Indian Tragedy. That reminds me when we were talking about the Voynich Manuscript, Preston John's uh, manuscript written in the 1200s that Harvard and MIT and everyone's trying to decode this, this, this manuscript. They still cannot decode the Voynich Manuscript. And they're saying, I believe MIT is saying that it's written in encrypted Hebrew. Encrypted Hebrew. Encrypted Hebrew. I never heard of encrypted Hebrew unless we're talking about a seal being put on it. With the foundation of Hebrew, there was a seal put on this book that they can't get through. Now, they also call it a stylized, Indianized Hebrew. A stylized, Indianized Hebrew. Which reminds me here where he's saying he's writing an Israel Indian tragedy of Tecumseh. Stylized, Indianized Hebrew is the Israel Indian, is the Amaru Khan. The Khan is the priesthood, and they just found it in America. Oh, remember, while most of us associate the founding of perpetual youth with New World, especially Florida, now they, they associate it now with Florida or America, and it's only been for the last 500 years. That's when they started ending their search for Preston John over there. After 500 years of searching, now they're focused on the Americas, which is why their search concludes. And for the last 500 years, they're searching where? <laughs> Managa. They're looking for you. You are the fountain. You got the fountain of you. Do you remember? I mean, hey, man, we're just talking to Kumsay, the Israel Indian tragedy. Let's get that link. Let's, let's, let's start getting linky here. Let's enjoy the flow, enjoy the process. Take it easy and keep the fire burning. The War of 1812. So this is an article by Donald Fixico. Let me get my alkaline. Because it's going to be good. The War of 1812 was an important conflict with broad and lasting consequences, particularly for the native inhabitants of North America, right? The aboriginals. Let's go. During the pivotal years before the war, the United States wanted to expand its territories. A desire that fueled the invasion of native homelands throughout the interior of the continent. Tribal nations of the lower Great Lakes, including the Shawnee, Patawatomi, 
Ojibwa, and others saw their lands at risk. The same was true for the Muscogee, Moses, Muscogee, let's go, Seminole, Choctaw, Cherokee, and Chickasaw in the South. The native leaders who emerged in response to this expansion shared a single, single concern, that of protecting tribal lands. There were Indians who sided with the Americans, Red Jacket, and Farmer Brothers led by a Seneca fraction faction to help the Americans at the battles of Fort George and Chippe Chippewa, but most Indians sided with the British against the U.S., believing that the British victory might mean an end to expansion. Now, you have to look deeper at this whole siding with the British thing because, remember, They're looking for you. Remember. Benjamin Franklin is saying in 1751, right? So we're just talking the seven, late 1700s, we're talking the early 1800s, so in the same time period, Benjamin Franklin has already told you all of Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America exclusive to the newcomers, holy so, holy, not halfly, holy tawny, tawny is copper colored, tawny is is brown, ruddy, right? So you got all of America is all of Africa's black or tawny, Asia's mostly tawny, America's wholly tawny, brown people, copper colored people. <clears throat> and what does Britain look like, man? What does uh, Europe look like? In 1751, 1751, this is all relative to the Comet of 1811. Let's go. Europe looks like what? And in, in Europe, the Spanish, Spaniards, Italian, French, the Russians, the Swedes, and generally are generally of what we call swarthy complexion. Swarthy, right? Swarthy being of a dark hue or dusky complexion or tawny. So swarthy is tawny is what they're calling dark skin people. Black as a swarthy African, right? Black people, right? Tawny people are so-called black people or so-called dark. Tawny, swarthy. So Benjamin Franklin's telling you in 1751 that all of America are black people or tawny people or swarthy. All of America's dark, dark skinned people. Right? Africa and Asia are all dark skinned people. At Europe, the Spaniards are dark skinned people. Italians are dark skinned people. French, Russians and Swedes are dark skinned black folk and are generally are what are called swarthy, tawny, black, right? I'm just using their words. Let's go. As are the Germans. They also are black folk, dark people, dark complexion. Do you get it? The Saxons accept it. Who with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I need you to focus. My people, this is in 1751. And the whole world was black or swarthy, tawny, right? Black. You got Arnold Swart, Swart, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, Naga, 
He's just wearing your title, Swartzenaga, Dark Naga, Blackity Black is his name. Black, Swarthy. 1751. The only white people, right? This Only the English and the Saxons. The Saxons and the English make up the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. This is very important. So what happened between 1750 and 2019 where you think you're the minority? Do these people breed like that? Do they have a birth rate like that? That suddenly the majority becomes the minority in 200 years or so? Is there anything in history that we can compare this to where the majority of people on the face of the earth become the minority within 200 years because they just got the drop on us right they just got the drop right is that a fact he said I could wish their numbers were increased he's talking the small principal body of whites w-i-g-h-t remember there's two whites right <laughs> And this is what you're going to have to factor in. Which whites are the majority? Which Is this a virus you're talking about? And this white, a bean. It's a bean. I need you to focus. It's a bean. A person. It is obsolete. Except in irony, the white of the world, of all the world who love the best, the best, the best, swift, nimble beings, and other definitions, we got demon, spirit, they say see ought, ought to be wanting, ought, uh -huh. so you have this being, this is a white, that's a being. All right, let's just stay focused. And the Saxons only, with the English, make up the principal body of these beings on the face of the earth. Everybody else was swarthy complexion. Everybody else is black folk. In the 1700s, remember when he's saying this, 1751, there's still a black king on the throne. We got that. He says the King George is still swarthy in 1751 is while he's talking. So if the whole world in 1751 is black swarthy folk, except for the Saxons and the English, which makes up the principal beings, which beings you dig on that white. All this earth, and only the Saxons and the English are whites, beings. What happened? I mean, honestly, what happened? Are they just lying? Did they put an inception in our mind? Are we that brainwashed to think that we're the my? Minority, even though you could watch the Olympics and you see nothing but these so called black folk in every country, but they just must be visiting, boss. Because it's all white. Europe is white. Nah, man, Europe is swarthy. And this is very important. What happened with this comet in 1811? What gave them this power after that? to destroy what happened right what happened wrong well, we know that all these Europeans are swarthy black and tawny
Because right after that 1751, oh boy, America goes to war. Remember this link, America's been at war 93% of the time, right? So we're going to talk about the war with Tecumseh. We're going to get back on that. We got the link. Um, we did a great video, man. We, 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 we put some great recon into this dragon canoe drop right here uh, back in May. 2011 so we're going to touch on some of the you know but i'm gonna leave this link because this is very important for you to dig on that will connect to what we're doing here as well because america's been at war 93 percent of the time and who did they go to war with first in 19 in 1776 right so you got 1751 everybody's black that means britain's black that means when we talk about an alliance you're talking about an alliance with other black folk now, which side of the coin were these black folk on versus which side of the coin were these so-called black folk, Moors, whatever you want to call them, that were doing treaties, treaties, treaties on the side of the so-called hijack Americans. And you got these Chickamaugas that refused to do treaties with the rest of the, when the rest of the Cherokee were doing treaties, they refused to do treaties. They fought it out. They followed Dragon Canoe. They followed Hawata. You get that video so you can catch up on that. But look at it, man. It up until what? 17, 94, 95. So this is like over 20 years or damn near 20 years. And you know it continued because after that we just got Seminole Wars. You got Tecumseh's War in 1811. Look, man, we're just putting it together. I didn't even know this was here. You got the War of 1812, Tecumseh's War. Man, all this got to do with Tecumseh? This is, the, this is just national history. You can't get around Tecumseh. You just never focused on Tecumseh. You never focused on who this is and why they say he's a shooting star. Why he say he's a comet. Why they say he's a meteor. Why they say he's a prester. Because we're just talking priest, which means we're talking media. So let's talk about Hawatha's comet. So when they say, but most Indians sided with the British, then we realize that these British in 17, you know, in the 1700s or early 1800s were still dark melanated people. They didn't become whites, right? They weren't the majority, only the English and the Saxons, right? So whatever side these English and Saxons were on, that became the Anglo-Saxon American. So you had to fight against these English and Saxons. Now compare this British, Britain. Remember, Brit just means covenant. You got the Brit connected to the Picts, connected to the Russes, connected to the kings of, of Jerusalem. So you got these folks in what they're calling British, Britain, which is swarthy. And they made in. So you got. Indians siding with the Americans and Indians siding with these other Swarthies over here that might be the same family as them or at least against the same, you know what I'm saying, uh, Saxon English hijack, so to speak. It says, in all, more than two dozen native nations participated in the war. In addition to the lower Great Lakes Indian led by Tecumseh priest, king, chief, right? And Southern Indians, the Mohawks fought under Chief John Norton to hold on to their lands in Southern Quebec and Eastern Ontario. So they had a Chief John, right? <laughs> All right, there's another Preston John right here. He's a John. All right, let's go. The Indian Confederation under Tecumseh, the Shawnee War Chief Tecumseh and his brother, the Prophet, now we start sounding like what Moses and Aaron, right? You gotta, 
You got Aaron, you got a Moses, one is a prophet, one is a Levi, a Levite. Well, they're both Levites, but you know, one is a priest here, and, and the other is, you know, King, Khan, I mean, Khan to the people, so they're working together. So you got the Shawnee chief, Tukumse, his brother, the prophet, also known as Tens Katawa. Tens Katawa. Wa. You see, the Wa is always present. So you got Tens Katawa played crucial roles in leading the Indians in the war. By 1811, Tecumseh had built a confederation of more than two dozen Indian nations, all of whom hoped to stop the American settler encroachment of the land. So they were stopping. They were fighting the invasion. And you got certain other Nagas in Britain that were also fighting the invasion there. And they teamed up to fight this super team that was doing treaties with other Nagas here. You got the Dragon War. You got all that great... Uh, Great links, man, that uh, System is D and the Copper Color Awakening dropped on us, bringing in how Britain had dragons and, and how these so-called American hijacks were having to fight against Britain and and, and their dragons, all right? But they also had dragons here, man, so dragons played a big role in this war, whether you see it or not. I mean, you if you could say angels played a big role in the war, you might want to clarify that and know that dragons played a big role in this war but again look out for the series angels and dragons because we're going to tie all that together because we keep it clear we keep it transparent this is not confusion so you got Tecumseh and his brother the prophet all right they're leading the Indians now keep in mind dragon canoe Dragon or dragging, right? Dragon or dragging canoe. See you gone, Sini. All right. A Cherokee war chief who led a band of disaffected Cherokee against colonists and United States settlers in Upper South during the American Revolution. Afterwards, Dragon Canoe's forces were sometimes joined by the Upper Muscogee, Chickasaw, Shawnee. So we talk about the same people and we say, oh, are you talking about the same person? Is Tecumseh Dragon Canoe or is Tecumseh coming in the heels of Dragon Canoe? Is he following the, the lead, the footsteps of who this Dragon Canoe is? Because it appears that this Dragon Canoe was rocking slightly, maybe 20, 30 years before um, Tecumseh. But that's nothing when we talk about putting our history back. I mean, 20, 30 years, you know, could be something, could be nothing, you know. So you got this Dragon Canoe. His forces were sometimes joined by the Muskegee, Chickasaw, Shawnee, and other Indians from the tribes and nations, along with British loyalists and agents from France, from France and Spain. So we just got by Benjamin Franklin. What about France, Spain? And in Europe, the Spaniards, the Italians, the French, France. The Spain Spaniards are what? Swarthy complexion in 1751. Let's put it together. So they're saying he was born in 1738 in a time of the swarthy French and swarthy Spanish and swarthy Brits. Which is why they worked together against the Saxon or English. Remember the Scottish Arboro, the 1320 dropped on us by higher mark that as long as the hundreds of us standing, we'll never fall back under English rule, right? The English and the Saxons, right? What did Franklin say? The Saxons only who with the English make up the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. So the whole point was to fight against these whites w-i-g-h-t these beings that were invading like a virus and they were 
having to form their own alliances and get tribed up. That's all they were doing was tribing up. Following their who? Their priest kings. Israel will return and seek Hawa, their creator, and David, their king. So you're just returning to seek, to search, to seek, to search. Because they've been seeking and they've been searching for your prester or your meteor. But are you searching for your meteor? Are you searching for the meteor? Let's talk to Kumse. I mean, come on, man. We just talking meteors. Celestial phenomena, that's it. Are we witnessing celestial phenomena? It don't say space rock, do it? It says celestial phenomena. Things in heaven above. Things in heaven above. Is a meteor. Things in heaven above is a meteor. Or a prester. Something in heaven above is a prester or a meteor. Meteor, things in heaven above, things high up, high up, quam, meta, meta means lifted, <gasps> breath, you have lift, you have a voice to raise, lift, raise, quam, raise, lift, then it became specific sense of a fireball in the sky or a shooting star from the 1590s man so get out the mind of a hijack when you talk comet or meteor that only became specific like ethiopia to africa only became specific recently with trickery from the hijack but if you overstand understand and understand the etymology and play you know play their game with them and then you know, use it against them, you'll see that, you know, all the walls fall down. And we understand, overstand, understand that a media is nothing but a thing that's high up. Meta lifted. Prester meteor. Dragon, meteor, fiery meteor, fierce or violent person, this man or woman is a dragon. Let's go. So this meteor that we're talking about, connected to Tecumse, let's read some more about it, let's keep it going. Tecumseh and the other Indians' decision-making progress went well beyond politics. He and his fellow leaders knew that British and American linear minds moved from claiming land, no colonization and exploitation of natural resources. I mean, to colonization and exploitation. So he knew that these hijacks were not just claiming land, they were colonizing and exploiting the natural resources, the people. They knew their own process was one of native logic and inclusiveness, including involving the flora and fauna and native communal values and relationships. Thus, the Indians were acting on a different system than either the U.S. or the British. Choosing the British as an ally was difficult at best, but the future of Native American hung in the balance. Tecumse preached his confederation and alliance point of view to various tribes arguing that in the big picture an Indian confederation held the hope of stopping U.S. westward expansion. Now they just got to California in the 1700s. This is the invasion. This is the Holocaust. A Holocaust means a burning sacrifice. Man, you've been sacrificed. Stop looking for another one. You've been a burnt offering, Naga. They're, they're burning you now. Where's your land? Where's your things? 
Where's your gold? Are you seeking Hawa? Are you seeking Hawa? Are you seeking David? Where's your things? Where's your stuff? I mean, honestly, where's your stuff? You know? When 1811 when Tecumse was in the south, all right, so now we're tying it together with this comet in 1811, this meteor, this this thing high up, this high up situation, right? This lifted situation that's going on in 1811. 1811 when Tecumse was in Spain, a group of natives led by Tenska, Tenskawatawa attack U.S. Army forces in the Battle of Tippecanoe, right? The battle was a draw, but the U.S. General William Henry Harrison declared victory, and some had his troops sack and burn Prophetstown. Prophetstown, right? Tecumseh's home base in the Indian Indiana Territory. Following the Tippecanoe defeat, Tecumseh, Realized even more how important it was for British alliance during the war. The Indian nations fought more than 40 battles and skirmishes against the U.S. and in southern Canada, pro-British and pro-U.S. Iroquois found themselves fighting each other more and more. But in most engagements, the native forces fought alongside the British. They were key to the British success to both Detroit and Queenston. At the Battle of Beaver Dam, native warriors, with no help from their counterparts, defeated the Americans, taking 500 prisoners. All of the Creek War, 1811 to 1814, is not normally viewed as a part of war, the War of 1812. Creek resistance to the U.S. Army in the South led to a series of battles that eventually crushed the Indian military power in that region. So the so this Indian military power was crushed around this time, right after this comet. All right. I mean, how are all these things related? As this confrontation became certain, Tecumse promised his warriors that there would be no retreat. This battle, he felt, must be won in order to stop American westward expansion in all areas. But Tecumse was mortally wounded and his death and defeat marked the end of the native campaign to drive back white settlers, the beings, the English, right, the Saxons. On a larger scale, the American victory cleared the way for the U.S. claim to the native interior to, of North America with more treaty negotiations, more on more, treaty of peace and friendship, look it up, happening at this same time, right? You see, Dragon Canoe, he was the war chief or the priest king. They say war chief. I mean, our presidents are war chiefs. It's all about war. These were the cons. These are the priest kings. So he was the priest king of the Chickamauga Cherokee. And you know, we got this before, that the Chickamauga Cherokee were a group that separated from the greater body of Cherokee tribes during the American Revolutionary War. Why? The majority of the Cherokee people wished to make peace with the American rebels or the whites near the end of 1776, following several military setbacks and reprisals. They wanted to make peace. They wanted treaties. These so-called Cherokees and the real the real goons, the Chickamauga, said, nah, man, we gooned up. We tribed up. We ain't giving them shit. We ain't giving them shit. So they had a couple of setbacks, setbacks in 1776. Like what? Well, America was at war 93% of the time. What happened in 1776? Oh, 
America Revolutionary Award, the Chickamauga Award. Chickamauga, 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 Chickamauga. You finished the Chickamaugas. It was always against the Chickamaugas for the first 20 years, man. Who are the Chickamaugas? Remember, they didn't call themselves Chickamauga, man. This is a title placed on them because they were near this creek, this Chickamauga Creek. This is the precise lineage that we're talking to with Dragon Canoe, with Tecumseh. These are the same people. I submit that these are Israelites. Because when we're talking to Tecumseh, even in this great, you know, very hard to find stories dropped on this by Thai battle. It's talking about the Israel Indian tragedy of Tecumseh, right? Hold it, man, because we're talking Israel, man. And we talk Tecumseh, you're talking to Chickamauga. We're talking Dragon Canoe. What happened? The Chickamauga following followers of Headman or Priest King Dragon Canoe moved with him down the Tennessee River away from the historic Overhill Cherokee town so they're going down to Tennessee <coughs> relocated in a more isolated area they established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from colonists encroachment so they're dodging the hijack All right, the frontier Americans associated Dragon Canoe and his band with the new town of the Chickamauga Creek and began to refer to them as Chickamaugas. So these people never called themselves Chickamauga. We're in the mind of a hijack. Five years later, the Chickamauga, the Cherokee once more moved further west and southwest into what is now called Alabama. And why does Alabama rock the town? Why is this the flag of Alabama? Huh? Oh man, oh man. Why is this the flag of Alabama? Because we're talking about a mark, a sign, a crossing. What is this? St. Andrew's cross. Remember the types of crosses, right? I mean, one cross ain't another cross, right? Oh, he has a cross in his hand. Are you sure it's not a towel? Are you sure it's not a St. Andrew's, a Roos cross? Right, and then you got their Latin joints and all that. But this cross is not that cross. That cross ain't this cross. These are Templar. These are two cross sticks. These are the Hebrew Tau, the last letter of the Hebrew. And what is this St. Andrew's cross? have to do with the flag of Alabama what does that have to do with the Andrews which is why they call it the Andrews crop I got you here we go who are the Roos and the Rosses we're talking Jerusalem Jerusalem who are the Roos who are the Rosses why is this Andrew's Templar cross? Wisdom is the conqueror of fortune. This is the Hebrew Tau. This is the Hebrew Tau. This is the Hebrew Tau. The Hebrew Tau is the St. Andrew's cross. The Hebrew Tau is the St. Andrew's cross. This is Alabama. Let's go. So the Cherokee moved west, all right, into what is Alabama, right? So these Israelites, because we're just talking 
the Israel Indian tragedy. So these Israelites rocking their towel, rocking their towel. We're just talking about the lost tribes of Israel identity, lost tribes of Israel. We're talking the towel. Let's go. What is Preston John holding in his hand? Chickamauga. Go to Alabama. They make a crossing. A crossing. <coughs> so there's a migration happening, right? Led by a dragon canoe. Moved with him down the Tennessee River, away from historic Overhill Cherokee, led him all the way to Alabama. And in Alabama, they were met with the cross. This was the mark, the sign. And then they were more commonly known as the Lower Cherokee. So, like Egypt, you have Upper and Lower, right? Pull up this link. It's talking about Napoleon and Tecumseh's Comet 1811. So, you know, this is for you to dig on. The Great Comet of 1811, formerly designated C slash 1811 F1, is a comet that was visible in the naked eye for about 260 days. A record, a record it held until the appearance of Haley Bach in 1997. What does this dragon have to do with that dragon? There were no metal made at the time. There was no wonder because Europe burned in the Napoleon War. So it's also called Napoleon's Comet. It's also called Tecumseh's Comet. What does this dragon have to do with this? Yeah, I mean, I'm digging on it with y'all, man. I'm digging on it with y'all. The Great Comet 1811 seems to have had no particular impact on astronomers, but the artist artist world adverted to it. Tolstoy at the end of the second book of his work War and Peace wrote about the comet. It was clear and frosty above the dirty ill-lit streets above the black roof stretched out the dark starry sky. Only looking up at the sky did Pierre cease to feel how sordid and humiliating were all mundane things compared with the heights to which his soul had just been raised. Meteor lifted to rays. <laughs> oh man, we just talking meteors, right? Come on, man. Surf the wave. So his whole soul's been raised, right? which his soul had just been raised at the entrance of the Arbor Square, an immense expanse of dark starry sky presented itself to his eyes almost in the center of the above Preshistinka Boulevard, surrounded and sprinkled on all sides by stars, but diminished from them by all its nearness to the earth, nearness, its white light, and its long uplifted tail. We're going to get into these comet tails. Stars with a tail. Dragons with tails. Shun the enormous and brilliant comet of 1812. The comet which was said to portend all kinds of woes and the end of the world. In Pierre, however, the comet with his long luminous tail aroused no feeling of fear. So Tecumseh's comet wasn't anything, you know that brought fear it brought wow it, it, it brought qualm it, it brought a raising up a lifting but we know that something happened related to it you know that created a marker 
you know what I mean? Perhaps, you know, just a, a marker of something that we will have to go through. A marker that we will have to go through a time. Like Hosea 3, Jacob's trouble. For the Israelites will live many days without a king or priest. Maybe this was a marker of a time we, we're going to have to go through before we return and see Kawa and David, our king. Dawood. So it seemed to Pierre that this comet fully responded to what was passing in its own softened and uplifted soul now blossoming into a new life. On the contrary, he gazed joyfully, his eyes most moist with tears at this bright comet which having traveled in its orbit with inconceivably velocity through immeasurable space seemed suddenly like an arrow piercing the earth to remain fixed in the chosen spot, vigorously holding its tail erect, shining and displaying its white light and countless other scintillating stars. It seems to appear that this comet fully responded to what was passing in his own softened and uplifted soul, now blossoming into new life. So he was gazing joyfully. And we're going to dismount with um, a great drive from AD, man. I mean... Man, love to my uh, copper thread, man, because uh, all the bros in my thread and in the drop chat, you know, and the sisters, man, can't, man, the sisters, man, just, just lead us to so many, you know, that's why I said we are one. This is one drop, one nation. The drop is the healing dew. The drop is the water. We keep the fire burning, and it leads us, you know, to different things, and, you know, I, I'm being framed and shaped with my tribe. I appreciate all the inspiration. And all the drop from my tribe that has led us here and back here again. Let's go. Uh, let's check this one here. Uh, on the left side, a comet is going down. Neither in 1814 nor in 1813 was a naked eye comet visible. So what justifies its appearance in the metal? The explanation can be the comet of 1811 which portended the invasion of Russia and even capture of Moscow. Portended. Let's, let's make sure we got the drop on that. We're just talking Dragoon. For shown, previously indicated, it was a sign. Okay, 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 I got you. So this meteor or this dragon was a sign or foresaw the invasion of Russia Russia which is swarthy and even the capture of Moscow so was this a sign that hey man it's all good it's nothing to fear but y'all about to fall it's about to be a fall of the people because the Russians, the Russians, the Russians, the Russians are the Rus. Russia is named after you, my naga. Do you wear your mark, your towel, your sign? You are the royalty. You are the knights. Let's get a little more. So Moscow fall, Moscow, right? Moscow, Moses, Moshe. You see Moses in Moscow. You got the Rushes. Connect them all, man. So many people had associated the comet with Napoleon. All right, so he has a place in this. And now, when Paris was falling, a fall down comet represented the decline, declining power of Napoleon. There are all there are other victory medals of this time too but only on this a comet is visible and that's the comet right here I guess the shooting star alright All right. here we go right there 
Everyone's commemorating the sovereign nation Shawnee tribe. On the averse, an Indian warrior, the Kumse, watching the comet traveling through the sky, the legend, the, co the great comet of 1811, below one dollar. On the reverse coin, we find the issue of the sovereign nation of the Shawnee tribe. We're talking to Chickamauga, right? The story is the following. On, in March 1811, a comet appeared to Kumse, whose name meant shooting star or panther across the sky. Man, love to the brother Jaguar. Love to Jaguar Omic, man. Love to Caramayo for that great uh, Jaguar Black Panther drop. And we're continuing that investigation because it's all the same thing. Let's get it for the dismount. So the shooting star. Is the dragon. Is the shooting star. Is the shooting meteor. Or imaginary serpent. Or dragon. Or prester. Is the shooting star, the fiery shooting meteor, right? Which literally means to Kumse. So his name don't just mean shooting star. His name is Dragon. Remember... A fierce, violent person, male or female, was the Kumse fierce and violent to the hijack? Sounds like he was going in bone, fighting the hijack, along with Dragon Canoe and the Chickamauga. Were they fierce or violent fighting the hijack? I mean, I guess it took them 20 years to stop fighting the Chickamauga alone. And you know, these other... You know, Barbaries and Tecumseh's war. I mean, was Tecumseh violent and fierce against the hijack? Look at all these Indian wars. Cherokee, Indian war, Indian, Cherokee, Cherokee. It continued. The war never stopped against the black man in America. The war never stopped against the so-called African-American in America. The war never stopped, Naga. The war continues. The war continues, man. All this is still you. All this is still you. And this World War One and World War Two, it's still about you, man. And it all started with the Chickamauga. Are they fierce or violent? To whoever's writing this definition down in this dictionary. So Tecumseh's name is the fiery shooting meteor, the shooting star. He is the comet. He is the dragon. He is fierce to the hijack and violent to the hijack. This man or woman is a dragon. And so are you when you got your fire, your water, your air, and your land, Naga. Are you keeping the fire burning? Good, let's go. Dragon, dragon on the wall, let's go. Angels and dragon. Yeah, we're going to have a good time getting into that Angels and Dragon series, man. This was a cool little blog. I'll just put it out, but it's going to prelude to our series. Uh, www.unexplained mysteries and you know this is author talking about what do angels do they watch over humans and guide society what do eastern dragons do they watch over humans and guide society think about it Asians believe that at the center of the earth rests the eternal dragon who also rests at the near center of the earth 
hell, hell does. Even heard from many near death experiences that Satan was a dragon. Wasn't Satan once a rogue angel? So this Satan or this uh, cursed serpent, right, was first in the garden, right? Remember in, in Job, the book of Job, Satan's just walking around. He's like, hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Welcome back to the meeting. Uh, how you doing, man? Where you been? Oh, man, I've been walking to and fro. Okay, cool, man. Hey, man, have you uh, thought about my uh, servant, Job? They just had a regular conversation, right? Because this guy versus Satan business, is a it, that's a myth. Oh, this is Satan. This is God, man. All frequencies, the creator. All frequencies working for and with the creator. Satan is going to the meeting in the book of Job, walking to and fro. Having a great conversation. The most high didn't start capping him. Ain't nobody start firing no smoke. Satan is the goon of Hawa's house. He's the goon. When you're out of order. Hey, uh, have you considered my, my servant Job? That's when you start being considered. Now they say Job, Job was a blameless man. You also hear that Job was an Edomite. You hear different things, man. King of Edom, different things. So he might not have been an Israelite that was just jammed up for no reason. But this conversation went down. This serpent in the garden, right? Let's go. And all the Christians always, you know, want to refer to this dragon, demon, angel situation. It's demon, angel, demon, dragon, right? So let's go. Then other angels are dragons too. If Satan is an angel and a dragon, then other angels are dragons too. The Eastern belief was that dragons were holy beings that watched over humans and guided us. The same thing that angels do. So you have a guardian angel, you have a guardian dragon, and every Naga got a dragon. That's all you need to flip the script is your dragon, which is... A fierce or violent person to the hijack, a Tecumseh. We're talking the Tecumseh's comet or meteor. This man or woman is a dragon. So I believe that the angel image we have is personification and symbolism rather than actual reality. Now, real angels must be dragons. Real angels must be dragons. So our whole series is going to be about this called Angels and Dragons. He said, now in the past, we have many pictures and images of dragons all around the world, but no recordings of dragons actually going extinct or mass killing of dragons. Now, they never died because they weren't mortal creatures. If you're thinking of some of the more evil looking dragons i'm not saying that all types of dragons were holy just certain ones which is what we're saying stop trying to demonize the entire species of fire water air and land stop trying to demonize all angels because satan is an angel oh satan's an angel all angels must be demons are all angels demons because satan's an angel so all dragons are not demons because satan's a dragon because these angels are dragons, whether they're rising or falling, whether the meteor is rising or falling. You're dealing with etheric energies above the barrier. Not all types of dragons were holy, and not all types of dragons were some hijacks. Let's go. It's another great comment down here on the same joint. Shadow Tiger, this is from Draconic Chronicler. I share your same thoughts about the connection between dragons and angels only a few years ago and ever since have been researching this intriguing subject and can say you are right about your conclusions. If you go to those threads mentioned by Frogfish, you would see the connection between dragons and angels. I am just completing a fairly massive book on the subject that will contain footnotes to all original sources and photographs of actual events that substantiate the claims I make. It is pointless to argue whether or not God and his angels and dragons are real. But my book does prove, as the original scriptures themselves, that both the early Christians and Jews understood that dragons were a kind of heavenly serpent, heavenly serpent, heavenly, heavenly creature to Hawa, to God. This is beyond dispute. You can't dispute 
that the seraph and the seraphim, these six winged fiery, fiery serpents, right? Fiery dragons. The seraphim are the dragon. This is beyond dispute. The original Hebrew text proves this and we see an exact parallel in other religions and the regions of these same dragons serving the same functions. Even the greatest theologians of Catholic Church acknowledge dragons are heavenly creatures in the past but have changed their views to kowtow to modern sensibilities. But their writings confirming the original church views on dragons have not been destroyed and are accessible, some even on the internet. You'll see that originally they were rocking with this energy and then it became you know what I'm saying, uh, demonic, demonized, you know what I'm saying, just like the Naga. They got demonized when you got demonized. They call you, they call you cursed seed of ham. They call you uh, savages, right? In more modern times, various Christian denominations have rewritten the Bible. The Christians, who you're getting your revelations from, rewritten the Bible, vainly attempting to wipe out all traces of the heavenly dragon. So all you got is this demonic red dragon and revelations to compare these things to you're not looking at psalms 18 which we gonna get into in the series but is a hopeless task because they could not rewrite their original scripture in hebrew plus new archaeological discoveries including whole books of scripture which the catholics tried to destroy only add more evidence of the dragons which curiously appear in virtually every other world culture as well and rarely as a symbol of evil, but rather power and wisdom, just as in ancient Hebrew and Christian scriptures also originally portray them. Come on, man. Come on, man. We're just talking angels and dragons. Another link we'll get into later. Satan the snake. Angels are dragons. Old Testament world and the secrets of the Bible. Getting into Numbers 13. The Nephilim. The word actually is derived from nephil, meaning fallen. The nephilim were simply the fallen ones or the fallen dragons. You got the serpent. The serpent was more cunning than the beast of the field and tempted Eve to eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when she did so, her eyes were open and she could discern good and evil. Interesting thing is the word serpent here is the exact same word for foretelling the future. Seeing clearly, right? Dragon means to see clearly divination prophesying discerning so discerner serpent was more discerning than the beast the discerner was more discerning than the beast not oh the snake was more cunning than the beast the discerner was more discerning than the beast and tempted eve to eat the tree of discerning good and evil see a pattern then we're going to get into the seraphim the seraphim described in isaiah 6 Verse 1 through 6, as beings immensely close to the glory of Hawah, God, whose sole purpose is to display that glory. The seraphim, they have six wings, two to cover their eyes, two to cover their feet, two to fly with. I always imagine them as humans. And they were always described as being at the very top of the different orders of angels, seraph, seraphim, cherubim, archangels, angels. Man, then you get to Numbers 21, the fiery serpents with wings. Hmm, sounds to me like dragons. So the seraphim are not some angelic human beings with wings. Instead, they are huge, fiery, six-winged dragons. Wow, is that weird? Oh, man. We're just talking to Kumse. We're just talking to Great Comet. It's another one for you to dig on, referring to Napoleon's coming, the Napoleon Wars. This is the Great Comet of 1811 or 1812. It says uh, this Great Comet of 1811, which was the brightest comet with the longest duration of brightness on record. 260 days they saw this thing, man. 260 days. Oh, man. It's referred to Napoleon's comment because Napoleon 
wars and the impending war of 1812, which the United States was allied with France, Germany, Austria, against Britain, Spain, Portugal, and Russia. There seems to be the war of wars, and you would think Napoleon War is something completely separate than the than the Tecumseh situation. If you didn't, if, if they don't mention Tecumseh, you, you wouldn't even be in the race to understand that this is a comet that is directly associated with Tecumseh, whose name means shooting star or panther across the sky, man. Traveling southeast throughout the southeast, traveling throughout the southeast to build alliances with his tribes, man. He was bringing the tribes together. He told the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Muscogee, and many others that the comet sig signaled his coming. Because he is the comet, he is the media, he is the shooting star. It is reported that the Kumse would prove that the Great Spirit had sent him by giving them a sign. Shortly after the Kumse left the southeast, the sign arrived in the form of a major earthquake. So when he left, bang, shit started popping off, man, put it together. During the next year, tensions between the colonists and Native Americans rose quickly. This lovely metal commemorates the Comet and Tecumseh, letting you know, don't just talk Napoleon Wars in 1811, 1812. We're only really talking Tecumseh, the Comet. We're only really talking the shooting star, right? Tecumseh, the meteor, the dragon. And that's why we always come back to home, man, when we say, who is Prester John, a meteor thrown from the clouds with such violence, right? Fierce and violent person. This is a dragon that by collision, it is set on fire. We're talking raising, lifting. So you got those links to look into even more. We're going to dig more on Tecumseh. Remember, this war is about you, my naga. This war is about the Chickamauga. It's about the indigenous. And we talk, and we're going to dig on this. We're going to definitely get down on this, man. When we talk, uh, you know, their their royalty, right? When we talk their, their history, it's all about the Israel-Indian connection, which they're calling the Israel-Indian tragedy of Tecumseh. Let's go to page 27. Of the PDF. It starts talking about the original history of ancient America. Oh, okay, I like that. I like that. It starts talking about this author's historical work upon the life of Tecumseh, right? The comet, the media. Named to be used for South and Central America. Okay. It goes into the aboriginals wrongly named Indians by Columbus. Because these are Israelites, man. Let's get the first couple of little, you know, paragraphs here. In the prefatory remarks to the forecoming work upon the chieftain, priest, king, prester, Tecumseh, shooting star, shooting media. The following language is used and we avail ourselves of the privilege of extracting from our own storehouses materials for the commencement of this new historical campaign. A courteous reader in tracing the fate of Tecumseh as depicted in the pages of his life will not fail to observe the strong analogy between the religious settlements of the chief of the forest the Khans and those of the ancient Hebrews. You will not fail to observe my naga the strong connection, the analogy, the connection between these indigenous people of the forest and the ancient Hebrews. Copper color race is found here. The language as uttered by Tecumseh is not written by the pen of fiction merely to uphold a theory of the brain but gathered from the archives of a people's history to support a theory of apparent truth. The present writer will not yield to any man in the firm belief that the aboriginals of North America, not North America only, and the ancient Israelites are identical. 
Again, the present writer will not yield to any man in the firm belief that the aborigines of America, North America, and not North America only, are the ancient Israelites. The aboriginals are the Israelites. The aboriginals are the Israelites. The aboriginals are the Israelites. The Lord again. We're going to get back in this racism, man, as well, man, where it's talking about, you know, these aboriginals following Prester John. And now you're getting it from another substantiating source, man, that the aboriginals are the Israelites. The aboriginals, the Prestors, right, the priests, are the American, the American are the Israelites, and they are the what? Copper color races found here. And these copper color cons, these cons, like uh, Carameo's drop left with these cons, these, these, uh, of uh, uh, Mayak, let's get it again. So much drop going down in the neighborhood, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, uh, Tiplar got his uh, flying man nine above third wave. Gotta love it. What this say again? The title cons. This title given by the Mayas to their rulers. So the con is a title given by the Maya of their rulers, which is the con, which is the copper color or swarthy, right? Benjamin Franklin's telling you. Everybody here is swarthy. The only white people are the English and Saxons, but everybody else is a swarthy complexion, copper color, tawny. So when we talk meteor, man, for the dismount, then we're going to maybe get a couple minutes from these videos. When we talk meteor, man, just remember... Pull up this link, dragons as meteors or comets. That when they're talking media, man. This is my first reaction to the question. Do the Russians, the Russians traditionally equate meteors with dragons? We're talking the Rus, right? Later I realized that I had no clear idea what a meteor was. After reading the available material, I came to the conclusion that the Russian folk folklore sources are equally confused. Lack of a precise definition of the term meteor. Oh, it's, it's it's something lofty, flying high, right? Star with a tail. What do they say? Which covers usage. They're looking at the Shrivnetsky's Dictionary of Old Russian, which covers the usage in the medieval period. Has no interest for meteor or comet, as such. That does have one for star with a tail. So it wasn't even called meteor or comet. Until recently, it was just a star with a tail. What else? Which is defined as a comet or com cometa in 1958. It was just called a comet. Before that, it's a star with a tail. What do you mean? The Vladimir Dahl's Etymological Dictionary of the Great Russian Language, one of the most authoritative dictionaries of the 19th century, con contains that generalized definition of meteor as an atmospheric phenomenon. Meteors may thus be aqueous, igneous, aerial, luminous. Sounds like a dragon to me. What else does it say? The definition of a comet in Dow's Dictionary is a heavenly body which, in comparison to others, is a huge mass, though sparse, nebulous, transparent. Sometimes it may be seen to have a nucleus while surrounding area forms something like a tail. Beard, yeah, that says beard, man. This comet has a tail, a beard, or tangled locks. Body bag, dang it. Body bag for the illusion. So the Russian Etymological Dolls Dictionary of Russian Language, Russian Language, describes the star with the tail as having a beard, and tangled locks, man. What comet has a beard and locks and a long tail? 
You're not talking comments, people. You're not talking comments. You're talking Prestors. You're not talking Prestors. You're talking dragons. You're talking shooting meteors. So this is the meteor, which is the dragon, which is bearded with tangled locks. So we're going to get back on, you know, more on, you know, Tecumse, man, you know, look more into that, man. You know, we're just getting started, kind of looking into it even more. A hive to a uh, aqua tie battle for dropping so much great drop on us, man. We're gonna get back into the strange story of the Kunse's comet, Black Sun Prophecy, and all that, which we've been getting on. And this is something else for you to read to substantiate this the Kunse's comet and the prophecy of what they're calling the Black Sun. His brother, known as the Prophet. His name meant shooting star. He who walks across the sky. Sounds like a dragon. Tukumse's brother was a religious leader known as the prophet. Who had predicted a solar eclipse in 1806. That's the black sun. Dodge the hijack. <laughs> a black sun was said by the Indians to predict a war. So this was a sign of this war. This Tukumse war. What war boss? To Kumse war, man. They're trying to hijack it with Napoleon. Nah, man. It was a sign of To Kumse's war. It was a sign of it all. It was a sign from above, from the ether. It was the dragon sign. And to Kumse's name literally means dragon. So we surfed away, man, and we keep it clear. Ahab, man, shooting star. Panther across the sky. We keep it clear. Our fire is still burning, man. I hop to the real ones. And let's get this dismount right here, man. Again, you know what I mean? Surf the wave in this link. We covered a lot of great information. Go ahead and get it. And I uh, love to AD for this great dismount, man. Let's get a few minutes. What is up? Love to static in the attic. Love to static in the attic. Fair use, let's go. Jared, welcome to my channel, Static in the Attic. Uh, I am about to show you the holy grail of truthers, how the NWO rose to power, all of it. And I'm gonna docu I'm gonna do this through documented official history. We're gonna go all the way around the world. Guys, I'm already up to the cause of the civil wars in all the countries, the world wars, it all ties together. And I'm going to show you how after 20 years of researching every subject under the sun, me spending two summers out here in the American Southwest looking for answers that I didn't even know the question to, spending hours staring at that ruined landscape, all this stuff that made absolutely no sense I'm going to show you how the floodwaters opened up literally and figuratively as soon as I saw this map to explain everything that we see in the world today. I am not kidding. Now, look, let's just get into it. I'm about to explain why the Mayflower landed here back in the 1500s and for 200 years, all the Western world was confined to this side of, of North America. And it's because there was a great civilization. It is documented. I have proof of how great the Native American civilization actually was. Bang. There was a great catastrophe in the time frame of 1812. That is when the NWO rose to power. Guys, it wiped out this whole area of the country. And I am going to prove it at the end of this video. First, we're going to go through country by country explaining all of it. I'm going to explain why Manifest Destiny was so easy after 1812. The Western expansion was easy. These poor Native Americans were decimated by a great catastrophe. And it's all in recorded history. You just have to look. This great tsunami, this was very synchronistic because in my research, this is hanging on the wall right next to me. 
as soon as I saw it, this was uh, painted in 1829. It was somebody in in living memory of a great tidal wave that hit a, a great tsunami. You can see Mount Fuji in the background that hit Japan. I'm going to tell you exactly why that tsunami hit Japan. Guys, this explains everything. Um, I'm going to say this. I started this channel yesterday. Um, I already have 29 new subscribers out of 50 views. That's because I'm dropping truth like balls here, guys. Drop hit it. like, hit subscribe, share this with everybody you know. It explains everything. This is what everybody in the truth mo movement has been searching for this whole time, and I'm not even kidding. Okay? So, is this thing, what is going on on my computer? Okay. So, let's start right here. All right? Um... So I'm, I mean, I'm going to skip the War of 1812. Everybody in America that's that's got an indoctrinated education through the public education system that went worldwide in every single country by the 1920s, so that every child is taken from their parents and indoctrinated into this Western way of thinking, this globalist New World Order way of thinking, okay? Uh, look, when I was a kid, when my mom was a kid, we all came up with the same Bible of information, the encyclopedia the encyclopedia britannica was the go-to book i mean it was the bible of information if you were researching the subject you went to the encyclopedia britannica these guys have controlled all the knowledge for 200 years now but they can't hide what actually happened in 1812 all they can do is separate it and confuse it but they couldn't just completely erase and change everything because people are going to have memories. Hmm. So you have to hide the lies and the truth. I'm you have to hide the lies and the truth because the people will have memories, man. Come on home, man. Remember who you are. I love the Zion train holding down the drop chatter, man, getting the drop. You are the copper color dynasty. You are the cons. You are the dragon. Peace and power.